Hola a todos y todas, bienvenidos otro día más al canal. Hoy tengo la suerte de estar entrevistando a Marilu, la autora de libros como El reino del revés, Los jóvenes de la élite, Sky Encounter y muchos libros más. Si os gusta la fantasía y la ciencia ficción, tenéis que leer. Hello Marie, Hello. welcome. Thank you for being here and for letting me answer you. I want to try to make hard questions, so thank mm -hmm. you so much. Of course, muchas gracias. My first question is about your your background. So mm -hmm. if someone doesn't know your story, I think it's really interesting because I know you come from the video game mm -hmm. industry mm -hmm. and I would like you to explain to people that doesn't know your story how you became um, a writer mm -hmm. after this experience because I think you also write before but yes. you know how you make that process from going to video game industry to the publishing and writing industry. Yes, absolutely. I have always loved writing since I was a little kid. Uh, I came over to the U.S. when I was five from China, and I didn't know English yet, so my uh, mother gave me an assignment to go to school and memorize English words and write them down, and that was technically how I started writing. Um, and then once I learned English, I realized I just really enjoyed the process of putting together these little stories for myself. So I would write all the time as a kid and staple together books and everything, but um, I didn't know that you could become a writer as a profession uh, until I was a teenager. And once I realized that, I knew I wanted to be a writer. So I, from then on, I had a goal of like, I, I, I want to become a published author. This is all I want to do. Um, this is my dream. But um, I went up to college and of course, my family's like, well, you could be a writer, but maybe pick something that's also stable. Like <laughs> when you're time. free time. Yeah, as a hobby. yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> like you can be a writer on the, on the side, um, but you know, you need to make money as well or to do something. So I, I studied um, political science and biology in college uh, at university because I thought that I was going to be a, a lawyer or a doctor. But before I went off to law school, uh, I was about to graduate, and I remember walking around the campus just feeling kind of down about everything and I thought like I don't know what to do with my life um, and then I saw like a bulletin that was advertising uh, internships in video games it was at the Walt Disney Company and they were looking for eight interns to work there for six months and they would just come up with new video game ideas and I've, I've loved video games as well since I was a kid so um, I looked at that and I thought like that sounds like the most fun job ever you yeah, know and it now it's like really cool it was so great it's, it's as fun as it sounds it was a wonderful job and I didn't know that you know this was something that I wanted to do necessarily yeah. but I knew that this sounded like something I wanted to do more than going to law school so I applied for it and I got in and ended up working in video games for five or six years and during that time this was my first experience you know working in a creative environment and it gave me a lot of inspiration to write um, for a long time I thought you know maybe I can't be a writer maybe I'm not creative enough or maybe it's not a real job that people do uh, and it took working in video games for me to realize like no a lot of people work in the creative professions and can have fun doing it and because I was surrounded by creativity it inspired me to write more um, so so after that, I worked, after five or six years, I got a full-time, I became a full-time writer because Legend ended up selling. Uh, and uh, from then on, I became a full-time writer. It's interesting hearing you because I think many people, uh, we have like the same experience. Like mm -hmm. uh, we go to a school to, and we study like the sensitive thing. Yes. The thing you're going to have like a, mm -hmm. a, a job that's an adult job and stuff. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, have, I had that similar experience too. And I think that many people that might, might maybe watching us have had the same experience. And mm -hmm. sometimes you may feel like you've lost time. Yeah. studying something uh, that wasn't your dream and, mm -hmm, and now mm -hmm. you are trying to do it and you feel like you've lost time but I'm curious if you feel that what you studied because it's also very interesting uh, the, the areas that you studied mm -hmm. if in the end that mm -hmm. helped you in some way with some of your books uh, or with mm -hmm. your writing even if it's not writing, studying right. writing I actually think that's a wonderful question um, that you're asking because uh, because I think some people think that you have to go to school for writing to be a writer and that's not the case at all. Most writers that I know um, came from some other profession or were doing some other job before they became writers and honestly I think that the, the, the thing that makes a person a good writer is not 
learning the craft of writing necessarily in a, in a professional environment or in a university environment, but experiencing life, you know, letting yourself do different things, try different things, study different things. I don't think you have to go to college for it. I don't think you have to um, take a writing program. Uh, I, I was studying, you know, political science. I was studying politics and, and biology. And even though I didn't use any of that for a, a job, um, I don't regret taking any of it because a lot of those themes have ended up in my books. Um, there are topics that I was really interested in and all of my books talk about politics and talk about the sciences and what happens, you know, biologically, if something goes wrong. Um, I think anything in your life can go into your writing and make you a stronger writer. So, um, so I love that you mentioned that, that um, maybe people are unsure that if they're, they're wasting time doing something that's not necessarily the pursuit of, of the writing craft or anything like that, that they're wasting time. But I promise none of it is wasted time. All of it is something that you can use to make yourself a richer and better writer. Actually, what you say you studied, I think mm -hmm. that being a sci-fi writer, it mm -hmm. kind of makes sense that you yeah. say like <laughs> politics and something yes. that could happen in the future, biology, etc. Yeah. So now I have a question more related with uh, your book. You write science fiction mm -hmm. and you also write fantasy. And mm -hmm. in most of your books, I feel that they are like uh, connected. Yes. So I was wondering uh, if you had to choose you can only write uh, from now on only science fiction or only fantasy books. Which one would you choose and why? Oh, that's so hard. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, you know, that's interesting. For a long time, I would have said fantasy because I grew up reading fantasy more than science fiction. As a kid, I, I read so much fantasy. I read any fantasy series I could get my hands on. And I didn't really start reading science fiction until I was in, in university. But, you know, now that I'm a writer for it, I think I would choose science fiction um, because it's funny. I feel like I, I enjoy reading fantasy more than I enjoy writing fantasy, which is which was surprising to me. You know, I, I found that writing fantasy is incredibly difficult for me. Um, every time that I've written a fantasy series, I've really like had a ch more challenging time with it than I have with my other stories. And I'm not sure why that is, honestly, um, because I love reading fantasy so much. But with science fiction, I always feel like I have, um, I fall into it more naturally than when I'm writing fantasy. I think something about the structure of science fiction fits better with my writing style, uh, and I find it a little bit easier to do. Uh, so I guess I would pick science fiction if I had to pick one or the other, just because I feel more uh, comfortable in it. It's so, it's so strange because I didn't grow up reading science fiction as much. Um, but uh, yeah, it just, it seems it just to fit happened. my style. Yeah, it just happened. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's like uh, writing chooses you for whatever yeah. reason. Like, mm -hmm. I want to do this and then you start writing the book and you realize that it's yes. not that. <laughs> this question is about uh, your characters mm -hmm. because I, I find in your books that you have like these anti-heroes mm -hmm. that are really complex and it's hard to write that kind of characters as a main character mm -hmm. because you have to make people love them and empath empathize with yes. them in some mm -hmm. way but they're they also have a really dark side so i was wondering right. where is the line how do you get to that line when you can relate to them and understand them but also you understand that they are and the hero they're feeling mm -hmm. what they're doing is in a way so that's a great question um I find anti-heroes fascinating to write because to me they are the most human out of all um, the characters that I read about. I think that um, the thing to keep in mind when writing them is to remember that we all think that we're the hero of our own story, right? And I think now more than ever, everyone thinks that they're right, you know, yeah. and, and can understand why other people can't see things that way. So who really is? The hero and who really is an anti-hero is very hard to say and it's a very subjective thing. So when I approach writing a character like, say, Adelina, who um, is probably my most anti-hero of all of my characters, um, I try to write her in a way where there are still certain elements about her that we can recognize in most of our daily lives. You know, she's she has so much anger in her and so much hatred for what's happened to her, but she's still, you know, she has people that she clings to in her life. Like she loves her sister, uh, 
um, even if it guides her wrong sometimes, she, she, she feels the need to do the right thing. And I think we can all kind of relate with that. There's like, no matter what kind of person we are, there's usually somebody in our lives that matters to us on a on like a higher level where we're willing to sacrifice something for them or do something for them um, and and I, th I think that's relatable I think um, her desire to want to be understood is very relatable I think that a lot of anti-heroes just want someone to see the world from their point of view however flawed it is and so the fun challenge for me is to try to write them in such a way where you know like what you're thinking is probably not right, <laughs> but I can see I can where see you're where coming you, yeah. from, right? <laughs> um, and uh, and so I find that a, a really fun challenge um, to to walk that line. It's a very very subjective line sometimes, you know, for what a character does that's considered noble or not noble. Yeah. And the young elites is kind of full of anti heroes who some veer a little bit more towards villain, some a little bit less. You know, Taryn is a character who I think most people would agree, like, you're a horrible person. But at the same time, you see where his journey is that made him that way. Yeah, it's a it's a challenging and an unsettling thing to write, but I have a lot of fun with it. And maybe that's that's why we all kind of uh, have like this attraction sometimes to mm -hmm. that dark uh, character that's morally ambi ambiguous and stuff. Right. And hearing you talking, I'm thinking about the feeling of anger mm -hmm. because I realize that in myself sometimes anger is mm -hmm. like such a powerful uh, yes. motivation to write for example like when mm -hmm. i'm sad maybe i'm not writing when i'm joyful maybe it's not that <laughs> important to me to write something but when i feel anger about some something mm -hmm. is like this feeling that okay i have to write about this so mm -hmm. hearing you talking about Avelina and how that feeling is mm -hmm. important to to her character i'm wondering if you also have this kind of feeling sometimes mm -hmm. of anger being a, a motivation for right. you or if it, maybe it's just me that i'm uh, a little bit no Adelina. Not at all. <laughs> no i think that's such a thoughtful <laughs> observation that you're making because we all know that feeling of of anger and and i think with, with anger specifically it's such an interesting emotion because usually when we're angry it means that we s something has happened that is not fair you know something has happened yeah. to us or something somebody else and we're like that is not fair you know this is not the way it should be and i and i love that you said that anger is something that makes you motivated to write and i think that's a really universal feeling because that's why we every like review you see online of like a bad product or like on twitter yeah, that's like true. is when we're it's angry true. like yeah. we just want someone to it's like we we saw something in the world we're like that's not fair I need somebody else to see that that's not fair. Like, am I the only one? Am I crazy? Or do other people see what I'm seeing? And I think there, there's something about that anger that makes us desperate to be understood. You know, yeah. we want someone else out there just to say, like, that's not fair. Like, I agree with you that that's not fair. And um, so I think there's something about anger where we're, we are looking for somebody else to also join us in this. And I think, I mean, for better or worse, that's probably yeah. why you see these online mobs start because yeah. we all, you know, you join in this collective anger um, for better or worse uh, on something that feels collectively unfair and it can shift things in the world. It can move things. So, so I love that you said that. I think that's such a universal feeling and such a driver for, um, for writing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I've been just uh, thinking about it for, for a very long time, so mm -hmm. I feel relief also to, to <laughs> feel understood, which is kind of the point. Yeah. I've been watching some of your interviews, you know, just to, you know, uh, know a little bit uh, more about your story because I've read your books, but uh, I didn't know, like, mm -hmm. you more personally. And in one of those interviews, you were talking about uh, two books that made you realize, you know, for example, that, hey, I can't write from a female perspective mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. fantasy because maybe you know it's not like yeah. now I think we have like more characters mm -hmm. and, and more uh, female authors and and that kind of stuff and also about uh, a book about that made you think about writing from a marginalized identity yes. um, uh, how you know how you realize that I can write from that point of view mm -hmm. so I was thinking if you could give uh, people that maybe feel like their voice is not uh, the most listened voice or they're struggling to find their voice in writing or maybe even in social media you have any kind of tip to find that voice that is not maybe it's not the most heard that is such a good way of putting it and so thoughtful um, 
Yeah, when I was growing up, uh, there wasn't the category of young adult, first of all. Uh, there were children books and yeah. then adults. So I just <laughs> have this memory of like reading children's books and then just jumping to adult and there was nothing in between. Um, but, but I read a lot of fantasy because it felt like YA. The problem with fantasy back in like the 90s was that it was almost completely, you know, stories that were all straight yeah. or white, you know, <laughs> main characters were male protagonists. And that was what I grew up reading. And so in my head, like, that's literally all I need to write. So my first stories starred like a straight white male protagonist <laughs> because I was like, this is how it's done. It never even occurred to me yeah. to put myself in a story like that because I didn't know that I could be in a story like that. And, um, and like you said, there were a couple of books that opened my eyes to that. And the first book I read with a female protagonist in fantasy was Kushiel's Dart by Jacqueline Carey, um, which is a very adult book, but, <laughs> but it was such a beautifully romantic book written in a way that I've never, I had never seen up until then in fantasy, and it blew my mind. It was one of those books where I was like, I, like there was a me before this book and yeah. there was a me after this book. And I felt the same way about The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin, um, also another way of writing fantasy that completely changed the way that I see the world um, and see writing. And so your question about if there's any tips and advice for young people who are, who are searching for that moment, that yeah, spark, that moment. you know, that <laughs> aha moment where you can see yourself or some semblance of yourself, in a story, read as wide and far as you can and know that there is a story out there for you. I think that the, the landscape has changed so much yeah. now um, than when I was growing up and that's been very encouraging to see. Even in the last 10 years, when I first came out with Legend, I think I could count on one hand how many other Asian writers there were in YA. There, there were maybe like three or four others that I knew and nobody else and I, I remember feeling very nervous about this and very isolated and, and since then you know we've seen um, so many more diverse voices come out, so many people with uh, who come from all types of marginalized walks of life bringing their perspectives to story and I feel really encouraged to know that young people today are growing up with options that are different from what I grew up with. Having said that, I know that there, at least in the US, there are book bans happening everywhere, um, censorship happening, um, where people feel afraid to expose young people to this diverse range of voices. And I hope that young people who are facing things like that know that um, they can find these books, they are out there. Um, you just have to search for it. And I think it helps so much to be online to find that. Um, on TikTok, I know BookTok is constantly talking about other types of books. Find your community, you know, find other people out there who, who um, share your passion and drive to find that voice. And I hope that, and hope that you find it. Yeah, I think also some, sometimes we think that maybe our story, no one is going to care about it. Mm -hmm. No one, you know, is like, oh, this story is important to me, but to no one else. And right. you're probably mistaken. Right. So, yeah. yeah. There's there's somebody else out there who yeah. also is looking. That's actually waiting for the story. Yes. So, another question. I've uh, I've seen that you also like it's very important in your writing process, mm -hmm. like listening music, like to yeah. put you in the phone, and mm -hmm. I felt very. Um, connected to that because I do the same and sometimes mm, people is like how can you concentrate and how can you do that so <laughs> I was thinking what kind of music are you listening right now because maybe that's kind of a spoiler of what are you going to write next yeah so there's maybe some artists or some album mm -hmm. that you are listening to right now yeah of course <laughs> I love that you also listen to music when you're writing yeah I'm yeah I'm that writer as well I, I have to have something I, I play need, I can't write without yeah. something that's in the mood of the, mm -hmm. of the writing I'm the exact well. same way I love that that makes me so happy <laughs> when I'm drafting I'm curious to hear about your process as well. Like when, when I'm drafting, I, um, I, I have to listen to something that's a soundtrack. So I listen to a lot of movie soundtracks, video game soundtracks, um, classical music. I love piano music. Um, I love orchestral music. Right now, at this moment, I'm listening to um, a lot of Stravinsky, uh, like the Firebird Suite. It's because I've been reading this book called Absolutely on Music. Uh, by Murakami and Ozawa, where he talks about, you know, he was a yeah. huge classical music fan, and so he talks in this book 
uh, with his friend about all of his favorite classical tracks and why he loves them and how uh, the rhythm of music helps him become a better writer and learn the rhythm of writing, which I found fascinating. And so I've been following through that, that book, the pieces that he's talking about and playing them as I write. Um, and it's very, very soothing and, and therapeutic to me to listen to um, you know, stuff that doesn't have lyrics in it. Uh, when I'm drafting, it helps me like, get in the mood. Like you were saying, like, yeah. I, I, like, I'll, I'll make playlists uh, by emotion sometimes. Yeah. So I have like the sad playlist and the <laughs> angry playlist and the battle music playlist and so on and put those on depending on whatever it is that I'm writing. Afterwards, when I'm revising or in copy edits or later on in the process, I will add in stuff that has lyrics, lyrics in it so I'm yeah. not so distracted um, listening to words. Um, the, 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 the album with lyrics in it that I'm listening to is, is Jack in the Box, uh, J-Hope's uh, new album that he came out with. Yeah, is, I'm, I'm a huge BTS army and uh, he had just come out with his next solo album and I love it. It's so good. Um, it, it's, it's, it's dark and it has great lyrics and it's just a whole different side of J-Hope yeah. that I've never heard before and I've really been enjoying listening to that. While, um, while I was working on like the tail end of revisions for my next book, which also stars a pop star. So, um, so that's been a nice connection. <laughs> Ooh, that's very interesting. Uh, my process is like, I don't mind listening to music with lyrics, for example, in Spanish. Mm. It's impossible because yeah. I, I can't focus. Thinking. But yeah. for example, if I'm listening to music in Italian or if in mm. English, mm -hmm. in English I can understand English, but it's m easier to you know yeah. sift. And also K-pop. I'm uh, now my, I'm a biggest fan of Stray Kids than oh, BTS. Oh, my friends too. Yeah. yeah. So I'm listening to Stray Kids. Like they have like uh, really you know that. noisy music. Yeah. So I am in my song, <laughs> I don't understand anything. I so it. it's not a problem uh, to me because I'm just listening mm -hmm. words, but I don't know what they're saying. Right, right. So that's easier How fun. for me to just listen in another language that's not Spanish. <laughs> I'm this exact same way. Yeah, I think we have a lot of parallels with yeah. how we maybe with you, our you, process. Mm, you could try listening like uh, music mm -hmm. in Spanish. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you wouldn't have that problem. Yeah. Well, if you have any suggestions <laughs> for your favorite Spanish musicians, mm. I will look yeah, it up for sure. If, if you like rock music, for mm -hmm. example, maybe. I yeah, love rock music. I used to love a lot uh, Héroes del Silencio, like mm -hmm. Silence Heroes. Oh, They're like okay. a very old school uh, rock music, I'm but I that. used to love them when I was in high school, for example. Yeah, I'll look yeah. it up like <laughs> right after this. I'm gonna, I want that sounds so great. I love rock music. Uh, my last question is if you can uh, tell us anything more than what you said about uh, your next project. Mm -hmm. If there's anything you could share about them? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm really excited to share this book with everyone. Um, it's coming out. April of next year. Um, this is uh, the start of a new series, although the book itself is a standalone. So every single book in this series will be a standalone. It won't matter which one you pick up first. Um, it's called Stars and Smoke, and it's about uh, this boy named Winter who is um, a superstar. He's a music superstar, and he gets, <laughs> he gets recruited to become a spy uh, by a secret organization. Um, to take down this criminal tycoon. Uh, and so he gets paired with a girl named Sydney, who is a secret agent at this uh, spy organization. And Sydney and Winter cannot stand each other at all. So it's an enemies to lovers situation. <laughs> they love hate that. being partners. <laughs> and, but then, you know, sparks fly as they start to do a mission together. Um, and are sent off to London to, uh, for a mission. It was my book that I wrote during the pandemic that I was just like, I just want to have fun. Yeah. I don't want, I just want to escape, you know, what's going yeah. on right now. And I just want to enjoy myself and be happy. And that translated into me hoping that this also gives my readers something that's just fun and brings them joy and entertainment for a few hours. I love that during the pandemic, it's like a writer, we wrote two different kind of books, mm -hmm. uh, apocalyptic, everything is yes. wrong, this is a disaster, and I'm going to make the most joyful book that <laughs> I've written in my, car in my career because I need to be happy right now. Yes, yeah. that's so true. Thank you so much uh, for you. being here. It's been a pleasure to talk to you, and I'm sure that people watching this is going to uh, take something from from this conversa conversation, what you said. So thank you so much for being here and for sharing your knowledge and your expertise and everything oh, with us.
Listeners, thank you so much thank for you. these wonderful questions. Um, I've loved hearing a little bit about your process as well. And I think we have a lot of similarities. So yeah. this was so fun. Thank you We're for the chat. We're like music nerds. So. Yes. Muchas <laughs> gracias por ver el video. Ya sabéis, libros de Marilu, Legend, Los Jóvenes de la Elite, El, el Reino del Revés, Cotillados. Y muchas gracias por ver el video. Nos vemos el próximo día del canal. Chao. Gracias. Bye. Chao.